Way back when I was in grade school, I remember being taught this little proverb to help apparently understand weather patterns. You might remember this. March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb. Anyone taught that? (laughs) Yeah. I thought it sounded neat and I've always remembered it. However, as I became an adult and being a native Floridian, I began to realize that whoever created this proverb wasn't describing what happens in the month of March in Florida. That's just, it must be a northern thing. The proverb does not seem to work here. And if, you've, if you have lived in Florida long enough, you've probably noticed that the end of March through May is actually a dry season. Usually this becomes obvious with one's lawn because you have to put a lot of water on it during those months. However, when June comes and the temperature rises above 94 degrees, the rain starts to come usually in the late afternoon. However... Lately, they have been coming all evening and through the night, it seems like, so whatever. (laughs) We move from a season of little rain to usually a season of great rain in Florida. And I was reminded of this in our first reading this morning from the prophet Isaiah, the great messianic prophet of the Old Testament. The prophet declared, springs of water will burst in, in the wilderness, streams flow in the desert, Hot sands will become a cool oasis, thirsty ground, a splashing fountain. That's kind of like April, May, and then June, deluge. For Isaiah, he lived in the Middle East, where desert and parched landscapes are very familiar, but also where times of fertile rains are a reality. He uses this imagery to describe the promises of God to a people who are fearful and worried. He says, God has this. Do not fear. God is coming and will save you. This parched land will bloom once again. These physical ailments will be resolved. Confidence will replace fear. Hope replaces despair. Energy replaces fatigue. God is coming. And what Isaiah is doing here is encouraging the redeemed. He is calling the people of God to look forward to the redemption of God, where all things will be made new. And the ultimate fulfillment of this promise of refreshing and renewal is still yet to be. It is the Christian hope, forever with Christ Jesus. It's it's a description of the new heavens and the new earth when all things are made right again. And although the future kingdom in Christ Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment, there are interim fulfillments of Isaiah's prophetic vision. We find fulfillment in Jesus Christ, who takes up some of the motifs in his ministry. Remember, Isaiah said this in our reading, the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. In Jesus' day, Some of John the Baptist's disciples came to Jesus to find out if he was the Messiah. And Jesus replied to them, go back and report to John what you hear and see. And this is is how he described himself. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Just like the Isaiah verse. Jesus saw himself in line with the prophecy of Isaiah, and it is only through him that this time of refreshing and renewing can come, for it is only through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what he said in John 14, in the Lord's own words in John 10, he is the gate that we must pass through, for it is only in Christ that we can receive the forgiveness of our sins. In his death and resurrection, he has made the way to eternal life. And by faith, through through his grace, we can be saved from sin and death. As Christians, we become born of the Spirit, and in Christ we become redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. In fact, this is what we celebrate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Our Book of Common Prayer says this about what the Eucharist is all about. Listen, you'll be familiar with these words. It's right one. It says this. Of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation, that's the, that's the thing that's being sacrificed, of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction 
for the sins of the whole world. And did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Well, that's communion. So what we're doing is celebrating his death, which is the sacrifice and satisfaction of our sins. And I love the way our liturgy gets to the point of the gospel. It says it so succinctly and beautifully. Just listen and consider these lines. I mean, you can meditate on these all day long. Jesus Christ suffered death upon the cross for our redemption. Let I me mean, just break that down. Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, the creator of all things, suffered death upon the cross for our redemption. That's, that's, that's amazing. A sufficient sacrifice and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it's in this sacrifice of our Lord that we find hope. Hope for the Isaiah vision to come to reality. And this hope this grace of our Lord, this renewing shows up even in our lives in the here and now. Even in our own lives, we find times of refreshing and renewing. Scholar John Goldingay writes this, In our own experience, when we see God replacing desolation by fruitfulness, fear by hope, silence by shouting, and our desert by a pool, and when we see believing communities finding their way back to God and back to the place of God's purpose for them, we see this vision finding another interim fulfillment. So even though it's yet to be, it also begins to break through in the here and now. We see the imagery of Isaiah fulfilled when a non-believer comes to faith in Jesus Christ. We see the parched ground of one's life become refreshed by the waters of baptism in Christ. We see those who struggle with depression and anxiety become whole once again. When we see those who have been abused or abandoned receive love once again. When we see those who have cried out in the dark night of the soul to become fulfilled once more. Our Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, is making a way where there seems to be no way. Our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, is on the move in our life, and he holds history in his hands, and he is leading his people to the promised land. Yes, we live in a time where there is political turmoil, violent acts, moral degradation. Yes, we live in a time where there is international conflict and economic difficulties, and that's, that's just the stuff out there. We also have our own personal problems, family, and health, finances, anxiety, depression, emotions, unforgiveness. I'm sure you could throw other things in that list. We may be going through a tough stretch. We may be going through enormous pain. I was reminded yesterday morning at our men's prayer breakfast of the Psalm of David in Psalm 30, who said, weeping may stay for the night but rejoicing comes in the morning. Take courage, church. Listen to what the Lord is saying through the prophet Isaiah today. He is bringing times of refreshing. I recently listened to the words of a song on Christian radio by a group called For King and Country and with uh, guest singer Rebecca St. James. They sing this song that goes right with the message from Isaiah. The lyrics say this, and you'll know it because there's a prayer that's very similar to this. Grant me serenity to accept things, the things I cannot change. Grant me the courage, Lord, to change what I can. Wisdom to know the difference. In my weakness you can shine, in your strength I can fly, and you make everything, everything beautiful. You make everything, everything new. You make everything, everything beautiful in its time, in your time, it's beautiful. So let us take in this message of Isaiah today. Let us proclaim this good news in the world that times are refreshing, are coming, that God will set the world at rights. And the way we prepare for that is with who Jesus is. And our world needs the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen once again to the words of Isaiah.
This time from the message paraphrase. Tell fearful souls, courage, take heart. God is here, right here, on his way to put things right and redress all wrongs. He's on his way. He'll save you. Blind eyes will be opened, deaf ears unstopped. Lame men and women will leap like a deer. The voiceless break into song. Springs of water will burst in, out in the wilderness. Streams flow in the desert. Hot sands will become a cool oasis. Thirsty ground, a splashing fountain. Our hope is in our Lord Jesus Christ, who never fails. Amen.